Hey, we are the damn things you're watching the Craig Podcast. Uh, Jill's not here, but could you just tell us about how the uh, initial idea to, um, you know, to start the damn things came about? Um, it just came out of Jill and I starting to hang out together and becoming friends, and then uh, one night in L.A., Fall Out Boy had a night off on the way to Japan. We were hanging out, drinking some beers, and uh, um, just started jamming. Came up with a couple ideas that we thought were cool, and that was the beginning of it. That was like the genesis, and we just kind of stayed with it. We just kept working on it and working on it, and then at some point, we felt like, oh, this could actually become something. And um, that's, you know, when... We first asked Andy to be in the band and play drums, and then that was a mistake. <laughs> and then we asked Keith. We asked uh, Keith to join, and uh, and then at some point Rob got pulled into the mix, it, and uh, you know it was kind of like this slow build for about four years up until the point where you know we were really ready to make a record. Yeah, because on paper everyone's different musical backgrounds. It it shouldn't really work, but it really gels on um, like I run a class. Um, I mean, did, did the songs come really easily once you know you started kind of uh, committing to the idea of being in a band together? I don't know if I don't know if it was easy. easy. Yeah, it was difficult because we were on such different schedules, so it was a lot of emailing files back and forth, and it wasn't until we finally got to sit down in a room together, which was like a year after it was conceptualized, that we started like really putting things you know down with actual form and, uh, and substance. So. But I don't know. It was a long process. I mean, once we got into our, once we got into our groove and our stride, then it started getting easier yeah. and easier. Also, once Master Songsman Rob Caggiano came along, <laughs> it really cemented. I think once once we all, like Keith, Joan, and I got in a room just working on the melodies and like that kind of stuff. That's when really everything kind of just took took shape. Yeah. Because you mentioned like the band's been sort of gestation for like four years, but w when did the actual recording sessions begin in earnest? We started drums in when? January. January. Yeah, yeah. January. But then we took a break, so it was kind of like we didn't have like a long stretch, a straight run. We, we, did we go on tour? Yeah, we, yeah. We were in Australia in February, and you guys every time yeah. I die was on tour. So between the, the touring schedules, it was pretty much whenever we could be home and work on stuff, we would, so there was a lot of in and out. Keith would come in, you know, every time I die, I would finish and then he would come in and work on stuff and then and then leave again. And same for me, like I got, I had, think I had like one week where I was able to be in New York to record guitars. And, um, so yeah, it was kind of a lot of in and out, but um, it's kind of good, I think, that it worked that way because it enabled us to spend even more time working on the songs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, while you were away from each other as well, just yeah. to finesse what yeah. your final parts and it stuff. It was cool to not really have to rush at all. You know, just really take our time with it and just sit with a melody and make sure that it was the right one. Yeah. Things like that. So that, that worked for me. Very well. A lot of stuff was changed actually in the last minute. Even when we were, we were mixing, we yeah. would be changing stuff and chords and overdubs and stuff like that. So. I think the more time we had, definitely, was, was for the best. Yeah, I mean, it seems a bit of a logistical nightmare, you know, everyone's touring the world at the different times. Um, was there a point where you thought it might not work out? No, no. never. Uh, if that, that would have happened at the whole beginning of this. If we ever felt like it's something that we couldn't do or didn't want to do, then it never would have happened. But I just think from initially with Joe and I, we felt so strongly about moving forward and, and doing this uh, because we felt we really had something that there's no way we ever would have let it not happen. Yeah. Um, so we've got a situation here and uh, I run a class that coming out together as a single uh, in late November. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the, uh, the, the lead track of the single? Um, it was just kind of the... I, I just remember the, the chorus being like, it sort of took me by surprise. It came out in order. The, it, the chorus melody wrote itself really easily, and I just, I don't, I, I, I remember it's not, I, I personally couldn't believe how catchy it was. And then it was just like, wow, that's really something. And then it just like it just seemed so organic. Everything was really coming together. But I think you know that 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 being the first thing, I think it was appropriate because it's you know lyrically the content is kind of about like being caught in a spotlight, not really knowing like what what to do next, mm -hmm. sort of thing. That's kind of like the deer in headlights 
feel that yeah. you know I had about this band in the first place. It's like, wow, this is gonna be something awesome, but I'm, you know, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it's a good a good representation of the band altogether. Awesome. I mean, does it feel different being in the damn things on stage compared to you know your day jobs, etc. Do, do you feel you play differently, or you know the the yeah, nerves are different, different yeah. beforehand? Yeah, for me it's definitely different because I I focus more on the sound of it rather than the look of it. With every time I die, it's a very energetic live show, mm -hmm. you know. But with this, it's definitely like I focus more on making sure that, that it sounds sounds good. Yeah. So, so um, how many uh, shows have you played now? Is it about ten? Probably. Uh, yeah, right around that because. We had that short run in June of shows. We came over and played some festivals. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe right around that many. I mean, we literally we came here on Saturday. Rob and I just finished the Jagermeister tour in the states with Megadeth and Slayer. Yeah. And then flew straight here without a day off and played Saturday night in London yeah. and last night in Sheffield. Keith just finished the European tour with Every Time I Die, 30 shows in 30 days. Yeah. Went home for four days <laughs> and then flew back here for this. So, I mean. This kind of goes back to the, was there ever a chance of it not happening? I think that kind of shows the commitment yeah. that we have to make this yeah. happen. So yeah. We'll play shows. If there is a, a possibility to play a show, we will play a show. Awesome. So a show of hands, who's uh, jet lagged to hell at the oh, moment? Oh, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very jet lagged, yeah. Awesome. So, I mean, I've, out of the shows you've played, a high percentage have been in the UK. So when are you going to move over? Yeah, really. <laughs> Save on the <laughs> Yeah, well, we can't afford to live in London, so yeah, it might be a little while after the record comes. Yeah, out. after the record comes. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'm <laughs> yeah, I was actually seriously totally. looking at flats the other day. Uh, right online, yeah, it's very expensive. I love London. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it so when did you stop laughing and get on with your day? <laughs> uh, probably like four minutes after. That, <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. We're actually we're thinking about relocating to Barnsley outside of Sheffield. It's, it's, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's a nice, nice little, nice little place. And yeah. you can still get houses for cheap there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just due so, to the apocalypse. We'll do the damn things from Barnsley. Right. Yeah. Excellent. That'll make Ian Winwood uh, very happy. From Ipswich. Yeah. So um, the album comes out on December the fourteenth, mm -hmm. uh, which is the perfect holiday gift for yeah, uh, Mel. Stocking Heads. stuffer. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Hanukkah, Christmas, Festivus, yeah. Kwanzaa, whatever you, I eat your thing is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, eat of them for Hanukkah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, um, so it's not a traditional time to release uh, an, an album, really, unless it's got the word Christmas in the title. Yeah, well, well, there's nothing traditional about the music yeah. industry anymore, anyway. So, I mean, really, it's kind of a free for all. Yeah. So Maybe uh, we should have done Santa Claus on the cover. That's with true. Yeah. We can make a shirt. Yeah, we can do a Santa Claus shirt. There okay. you go. All right, he'll be in. He'll be one of those. We should, maybe we should do that. We really so should. You can make a package deal. There you so go. You heard yeah. like a special edition with some kind of Christmas That's shirt. A That's a great idea. There we go. There you go. You heard it first. Excellent. So, what, what are your plans for uh, 2011? You got plans to uh, do a sort of full length tour here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, full cool. length tour official. Starting in Bonsley. Yeah, starting in Barnsley, ending in Barnsley. <laughs> we actually have a, I mean, there's already an offer for a UK tour supporting uh, another band, which we, we don't want to say anything yet because we haven't confirmed anything, but we're supposed to actually get an official offer today, I think. So, and this would be like a early spring or something like right. that, full UK run. So um, we'll see. But yeah, we yeah. absolutely plan on coming back and playing a full tour. Um, for the uh, the more detective of the uh, current podcast viewers, are you friends with anyone in this band, or is it someone you might not expect? I know a guy in the band. I can't say that we we hang out, but we it's like if I saw him, I'd be like, "Hey, what's up?" That's that could uh, be anyone. Then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think it's anyone that anyone in this band is like super close with. Right. Or anything. It, we'll just play a version of Guess Who uh, yeah, yeah. with bands instead of. Does he have but they're like definitely it? a cool band, and and I guess they're doing really well, so it could be a really good tour for us. Cool. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us on the uh, Kerrang podcast. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Ironic Class is out on December the 14th, yes. and a uh, perfect holiday gift. Yes, yeah, absolutely. For any denomination. Might include a t shirt now. <laughs> <laughs>